Mr. Martin! Mr. Martin! Mr. Martin, come quick! There's a man up at my place. Take it easy. No take time it. to take it easy. You gotta come right away. You know, Eli, in all the months I've been on this job, there hasn't been one week you haven't had three or four people skulking around your but, place. But listen, this... You got money in your mattress or something? This man wasn't skulking. He was saying, I don't know what, staggering around like he was lost. Maybe it's just his weekend they got lost. Mr. Martin, this man ain't drunk. <laughs> Not she sure is. Deputy, I'm telling you, this fella's different. Well, you keep him that way, Eli. I'll drop in on you on the way back. there. You could have ended up like that. Officer, uh, I know there's no excuse. I agree with you. May I have you? I was going uh, pretty fast, wasn't I? Oh, you were going pretty reckless, too. You know, this is an old road. It's uh, tricky and dangerous. It's lined with signs that say 25 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, caution, winding road. Now, those signs can be quite interesting if you're going slow enough to read them. I've read them all before. Well, who do you think we put them up for? Pedestrians? Can you give me one good reason why any sane person would drive the way you were driving? No. You surprised me. I was sure you would. Well, actually, officer, I'm uh, maladjusted. I come from a broken home. You want me to write that down for the judge? You're not going to throw the book at me, are you? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach into the hat and pull out just one of your little violations. 45 miles an hour, 25 zone. You sign there, please. Here's 
your copy? I'll save the reckless driving charge for next time. Sheriff's office, quick! Sure looks like he put up quite a struggle. Yeah. Be sure and don't touch any of this stuff, Eli. Don't worry, I know all about these things. Da 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 da. There's no identification of any kind. No wallet, labels all cut out of the clothing. All we have for sure is that he wasn't a suicide. <laughs> Not with his hands tied behind his back. You should have listened to me. I told you to come up right away. Oh, Eli, you remember the story about the boy who cried wolf? Don't you go trying to put the blame on me, Sheriff. Nobody's blaming anybody, Eli. If we followed up all your stories, we'd have to put on two extra men, which, but, by the way, you taxpayers won't let us have. You know, it's no wonder old Eli lives alone. No woman could stand to listen to him all the time. I wish I'd listened to him this once. Why, there's not enough time in the day to stop and measure all the ifs. You made the same choice I would, went after what you saw instead of what you didn't see. That's what you paid to do. I know that. Doesn't make me feel any better. If I'd gone with Eli, that man might still be alive. Now, look, boy, when I hired you, I hired myself a good lawman. I didn't think about what happened in Denver then. You stop thinking about it now. Just shut your mouth and solve this case. Morning, Deputy. Morning. It's rising with the sun, and you're just going to bed. Hoping to catch some worms. I'm trying to get a line on the fellow. Thought maybe he could help me. I'll do my best. A fellow about 55, 60 years old, tall, grayish hair, distinguished looking. When last seen wearing a suit of thin, dark gray, shiny material. Doesn't sound like anybody I've seen. Thanks, anyway. <laughs> Oh, if he turns up, do you want me to tell him you're looking for him? No, thanks. He's turned up already. Oh, yeah, here it is. R. E. Wallace, El Travador Motel. Well, that's all? Well, that's all you asked me. Well, that's all you got? No permanent address or anything? Nope. Well, you must have asked to see his driver's license. Why? Well, most people do when they rent an automobile to a, a perfect stranger. Oh, he didn't rent the heap. He bought it for 150 bucks. COL, cash on the line. The registration. Oh, he hasn't gotten around to fill that out yet. Hey, look, you're the law. What do you think? Should I send it to him at the motel? I'll send it to the county morgue. <laughs> 
Morning. Looks like it's gonna be another scorcher, don't it? Yes, ma'am. Are you selling tickets for the sheriff's rodeo or are you just raiding the place? No, I wouldn't think of it. Just trying to track down some information on him, Mr. R.E. Wallace. Oh, yeah, number eight. I don't think he's here now, though. I don't see his old yellow car. Would you mind if I just take a look in his room? Why should I mind? Can you tell me anything about this, Mr. Wallace? Well, not an awful lot, I'm afraid. He's been here four or five days, but he's not gabby like most of us. A very quiet, fine-looking gentleman. I'd say a businessman of some sort. Uh, probably from the East. Had that funny way of talking. This is eight. What? What in the world could have happened? This is just awful. What? Everything's ruined. I'll certainly have plenty to say to that, Mr. Wallace. Well, I don't think he did it, ma'am. How can I ever get it cleaned up? Don't touch a thing, please, as a favor to the state of Arizona. No label on this clothing either. Not even any laundry marks. All this expensive luggage. There's no initials on it, nothing. What does that mean to you? First, I thought the killer was trying to cover up the identity of the victim. Now I think the victim destroyed his own identification. How do you figure that? Any man who buys luggage as expensive as this usually has his initials put on it. Could be. Could be, Brother Bloodhound. But don't just stand there. He ain't tree yet. Get out and see if he can pick up his track. It's sure funny how now when I got nothing to say to you, you keep wanting me to talk. You gotta keep talking, Eli, till I can make some sense out of it. I can't remember crazy talk when it don't make sense. Well, try. Think. What else? Over. He did say something about over the rim. Over the rim. Well, that must mean the Grand Canyon. Well, that narrows it down to Arizona, anyway. Come on, Eli. Did he say anything else that, that you haven't told me? Well... But, uh, I'm not sure I heard it right. It sounded like dancing in the bucket. Dancing in the bucket? Uh-huh. At least that's what it sounded like. Got any idea what it could be? Over the rim. Dancing in the bucket. Bucket. Hey, wait a minute. You just keep your mouth shut.
Mr. Ward? Yeah. Oh, hi, Deputy. Say, what do you call that contraption out there? Tram car. You see anything of him? Around here, we call it the dancing bucket. Who's he looking for? Charlie Piper. Old Charlie's one of the guys that works here. He's missing. What's he look like? He's about 30, maybe 35. You seen anything of a man about 60, grayish hair, 5'11", uh, well-built? No, nothing around here but us chickens. You know, happened one time a guy did end up down there. Can you imagine he got so busy trying to get his ladder working, he just walked right over the edge. How do you figure that? How long has old Charlie Piper been missing? I don't know for sure. He's a watchman around here on the weekends. When we come on today, he wasn't around. And you didn't think of reporting this to the sheriff's office? Hold on, don't take me in yet. We don't think nothing of it around here when a guy's missing. Well, what do you mean? The work. Get some. See the bucket out there? Well, that thing travels 9,000 feet across that canyon to that cave on the other side. Inside that cave, there's about 500,000 tons of prehistoric bat guano. Oh, man, that's a lot of fertilizer. The only way to get the stuff out's in that bucket. I figured old Charlie probably got tired of shoveling the stuff and riding the bucket, so he lit out. Next thing you know, he'll be sending us postcards from Las Vegas or somewhere. Hey, Jack! What about it? Bill, not a thing. All right, bring it on in. It's time we got back over at the other side and started hauling guano. I'll ride back over with you. Have you searched the other side yet? Nothing over there but that cave and the cliff and a lot of tired, worn-out bats. <laughs> well, if you find anything, notify us, will you? All right. You want to ride over and take a look for yourself? No, thanks. Deputy. Hi. Hi, Harry. Hi, Joe. Scotty? Hi, Les. What can I do for the long arm of the law? Well, I could use a double shot of bourbon, but I'm on duty. Coffee. So you know Charlie Piper. One of my regulars. He ever say anything to you about leaving his job? Well, he had dreams, just like everybody else. What about you? You want to wear that green uniform the rest of your life? I used to have other ideas. I got a terrific notion. Yeah, what? Well, here we are, two healthy boys. You with the good looks, me with the baby fat, hanging around a ghost town waiting for the dry rock to set in. Now, ain't that a kick in the head? I won't argue. That ain't normal for two boys like us. I got an idea. Why don't you go out and disconnect the radio in your car? Sheriff won't like it, but that I can do. Good. Then we'll get rid of this thing. I'll take this packed house, the whole three of them, throw them out, lock the door, and we're off for Las Vegas. Scotty, I like you. And I like your notion. Tell you what, I'll donate my car. The siren will speed things along. We'll go for two, three days. Maybe the whole week. We'll do nothing but a lot of drinking and gambling, carousing, and disturbing the peace. Building mind and body. Only one thing, I work for the county. I'm poor. Friend, money can't buy happiness. All the money we need is for that first drink. Then along comes this doddering, wealthy widow. Somebody about 22 and eager to buy the next round. They keep dreaming, Scotty. We're one girl short. Tell you what, I'll drop in later and we'll make more definite plans. Thanks for including me. Well, don't dawdle, boy, because youth is fading fast over the horizon. None for me, thanks. I have to dry. Bobby boy, why don't you go inside in the back room, lay down for a while, and then drive? Did you snitch my keys out of my car again? Ooh. You did, didn't Ooh. you? Steady now, steady. Oh, he'll be all right. Marshall, how's Law and Order in the old west? Could be better, could be worse. May I see your driver's license? Of course you can.
No, just the license, please. Thank you. You connected with the Kendon gold mines? I'm not bragging. Any relation to Janice Kendon? Marshal, we don't bandy the names of women folk in our saloons. Hey, Scotty, can you keep an eye on this car? Maybe they'll be in shape to pick it up in the morning. Oh, no, well, wait a minute, Sheriff. You're not gonna lock him up for this. Nah, he can afford to feed himself. I'm gonna take him home. Come on, boy. Exist here, man. I want to live. I gotta go someplace else. Hey, John! I'm back here. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Hi. Where'd you find him? Well, uh, your husband seems to need a little help getting home. What shall I do with him, ma'am? Oh, he's no trouble. You just back him up like this and press firmly. Oh! Uh. It's all right. He's only my brother. Oh. He always responds beautifully to cold water. Wish I knew why he had to drink so much. Oh, that's, that's a tricky one. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll slip into something more comfortable. If anyone asks for me, I... Well. Hi, Dad. For anybody but you, I'd say you needed a drink. So I drink, so what? Better get in and change your clothes. That's what I call a brilliant idea. Good afternoon. How are you, sir? Hotter the weather, hotter his temper. Sure, sure. I haven't seen you around the place before. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. This is Deputy... Uh... Uh, Les Martin, sir. Les Martin. Uh, Jim Kenton, Scotch, right. rye, or bourbon? Well, uh, do you have any beer around? <laughs> We'd be dead if we didn't. <laughs> Ken, all right? Yes, sir, fine. Well, what have you been doing these days besides chasing girls and giving them tickets? <laughs> they letting you in on the murder case? You know, that was my old office where they found that man. Yes, we know. Thank you. Uh, when was the last time you were there, sir? <laughs> I haven't used it since the Battle of Gettysburg. The only time I go over there is when I get lonesome for the old days. Well, pleased to have met you, Mr. Martin. Thank you. I'd better be getting back to my fossils. What, what kind of fossils? Dad likes to wander up and down the canyon picking up rocks. He's pretty much retired these days. I think it makes him a little sad to see the mines now. The way it does me. I go and wander around the place sometimes. Watch it fall apart. I'm sorry. Do you want to sit down? Oh, no, thanks, Miss Kendon. I've got to get back to work. You're a real dedicated public servant, aren't you? Not dedicated enough, I'm afraid. Why do you always look as though you have something on your mind? Well, because I have. One thing I'll regret the rest of my life is chasing you the other day to give you that ticket. Why, well, Officer Martin, that's the most gallant thing I've ever heard. Yep, that's me. Gallant but stupid. While I was handing out speeding tickets, that's when the man was being killed. Well, thanks for the drink, Miss Kendon. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Instead of taking off for Las Vegas? Yeah. Not so sure about him now. That's his watch. One of my boys found it up the canyon. At the rim? Well, close to it. It was over by a boulder. 
Well, you know, even a dollar watch wears out sometime. Maybe he just threw this away. Well, I'm not Charlie Piper. Like a kid about that watch. Sort of a lucky piece, you know. You don't think uh, he'd have gone to Vegas without this, huh? I don't think he'd go anywhere without it. Down there. Charlie, all right. Boy, you didn't make that kind of money with a shovel. Not shoveling guano, that's for sure.
Pleasant surprise. Well, it's for me, too. You seen Eli around? He probably went into Kingman to get some groceries. Well, mind if I join you? Lots of room. What are you doing here? Oh, listening to the mills and the blasting. I can't hear them. That's because you never knew Kendon the way it used to be. You know, there were 10,000 people living here when the mines were going full steam. Oh, it was a wonderfully noisy place. The clatter of the big mills and the whine of the conveyor belts. And every now and then, a great big beautiful explosion. And all day long, kids laughing and playing and howling at each other. It was a rip-roaring town, too. You know, Scotty's saloon was just one of seven. Dance hall girls. Say, Methuselah, how old are you? It was less than 20 years ago. Look at it now. Yeah. Oh, for a few moments there, I thought I could hear it, too. Welcome to the club. Let me ask you something. Is it possible there could still be a lot of gold here without you people knowing about it? Are you kidding? You're sitting on $20 million worth of gold, and practically everybody knows about it. During the war, the government had to close down all the gold mines because they needed the manpower. Well, the war's over. What are they waiting for? For the price of gold to go up. So I don't see anything wrong with $35 an ounce. Nothing wrong with it. In other countries where there's a free market, it averages about $50 an ounce. Oh, well, that is a difference. $24,000 a hundred pounds. Darn right it's a difference. Mm -hmm. My father spent a fortune sending me to college in New York to make me ladylike and dainty. You come along, and in five minutes, I'm just a miner's brat again. I think you still look ladylike and dainty. I'll slug anyone <laughs> who says I don't. <laughs> With all this gold here, how come uh, they have only one man guarding it? Oh, Eli's not here to guard it. He just keeps the fences in repair so that the tourists won't fall down the mine shafts. And that well, concludes the lesson for today. All right, Peter. Here we go. Oh. Tell me, miss, what do you do when you finish a day's work? Go home, get your notes in order. Well, I generally hang around the pool hall. Sometimes I get in with a group to go stealing hubcaps. You need some recreation. You mean like a hobby, like uh, stamp collecting? Why don't you find yourself a nice, intelligent, well-rounded girl? Take her out for dinner and dancing. I think you're well-rounded. You might try my house, say, uh, 7 tomorrow evening. That sounds like a dare. Oh, it is. All right, you're on. Tomorrow at 7, lightweight gloves. Keep an eye out for cops. What are you doing down there? What the hell business is it of yours? Get up out of there. What's your name? Suds Reese. What are you doing here? Minding my own business, that's what. I'm hitchhiking my way out of this lousy state, so as I stop for a couple of beers and I'm sleeping them off. In a gold mine? Just wanted a cool place to sleep. 
You county cops got nothing to do but give me a hard time? Wait a minute. Where'd you get those? The graduation present from my mother. Yeah? You must have skipped a couple of grades you shouldn't have. Ooh! Get your hands up. Keep them up. Turn around. Spread your feet. Come on. Come on, what'll break your neck? What are you trying to pull, huh? No wonder you didn't want me to look at these. R.E.W. Mr. Reese, if you want to leave this state, ever, you better have a real good story about where you found those. What kind of a way is that to talk? I found them laying back down there. You had no idea who to give them back to, right? I don't know any R.E.W. Reese, you're coming down to King with me. Just to make sure you don't. You heard me. Come on now. Oh, what's going on out here? I've had enough trouble out of you and on me. I'm booking for assault and battery and suspicion of murder. Murder? Suspicion of murder, huh? This guy sure gets around considering he just got out of jail in Prescott late yesterday. Late yesterday in Prescott? You know this guy? He's one of my star boarders, Seds Reese. He likes us, don't you, says he? Sure. You got the best county jail in the county. Now, why did he slug me when I started to look at these binoculars? Oh, Suds is like that. Look at the initials. R-E-W. I certainly could be R-E Wallace. Where'd you get them? Like I told this joker, I found them. Sorry, Liz. Probably true. Anyway, we can book him for assault and battery. Sheriff? County attorney's on the telephone again. I'll take it in my office. Lock him up. Come on, Les, you might as well be in on this, too. I've met County Attorney Holton. He uh, doesn't think very much of the Sheriff's Department. The feeling's mutual. Mr. Holton, Sheriff Edwards. Oh, that's very reassuring, Mr. Edwards. People around town are beginning to wonder if we still have a sheriff. I have in my office the mayor and Mr. Sanford of the Kingman Dispatch. They have the feeling that though you may be on the case, you're not doing anything about it. Well, we are. Matter of fact, I got something on it this morning. Communication on Charlie Piper, Los Angeles Police Department. The old goat's just bluffing, shuffling papers. If we don't win the election, it won't be his fault. Now, here it is. Arrested for hijacking a truck. Beat the rap. Apparently, the county attorney down there wasn't doing his job. July 6, 1953, he was tried and convicted for the burglary of a warehouse. Yeah, yeah, it must have been a different county attorney. Edwards, I'll tell you one thing. Neither one of those county attorneys would have gotten a conviction if you'd been sheriff, because your Mr. Piper would never have been arrested in the first place. Look, Sam, why don't you take care of your department and let me take care of mine? Sam Houghton backed my opponent the last time I ran for sheriff. It's going to make him very happy if we don't solve this case. Matter of fact, it might lose me the next election. I mean, for both our sakes, I'd better make some progress, huh? You got the message. What are you all dressed up for? I'm not all dressed up. Well, you've got shoes on. It gets cold around here at night. If you must know, I have a young man calling for me. Obviously, you can't think too much of him if you're not even going to keep him waiting. Hi. Sir. Bye, thanks. How about a drink? I'll intoxicate him. Come on, Les. Let's live dangerously and take my car, huh? Not that dangerously. You can drive. Well, in that case. Good night, sir. I keep coming back to one theory. Could somebody be sneaking gold out of your father's mind? Somebody would have to sneak it out by the truckload to make it worthwhile. 
Well, if you had a big truck and taken ways, where would you take the gold? I've been accused of having fetching ways, but this is the first. This is hardly a big girl's idea of a gay night out. Can't we talk about us? I'm just trying to protect you. Somewhere in these hills, there's a murderer on the loose. Frighten me. If you don't answer my question, I'm really going to frighten you. Yes, sir. Well, if I was stealing gold, we miners call it high grading. I'd take it down to Mexico. Fifty dollars an ounce, remember? But you have to know a lot about mining to discover a rich vein. Yes, and that's the last of your questions. Where are you taking me, Mr. Deputy? To Scotty's. I want to ask him some questions. This is turning out to be a fabulous evening. I was hoping to combine business with pleasure. Then let's get down to business. Ah, uh, here we are. Thanks. Looks like your brother's here. He's always here. What else does Bob do? Well, he's supposed to be a geologist. He's supposed to be. How's that? Well, he just does it to keep peace in the family. I wouldn't say he worked at it, or at anything else for that matter. Except flying, maybe. Mademoiselle Kendall! Reserve table, a seat. Up front, not too near the music line. Spectre, champagne, of course. Hi, Scotty. Hi. Join you in a minute, huh? Right. Come on, drinks for our mix. Hi, sis. Stutter draw, deuces wild. You name it. Why didn't you come home last night? Why should I? Well, Dad and I were worried about you. I'm sorry that you're worried, sis, but I don't give a damn about him. Oh, look, Bobby. No one wants to interfere with you. Boy, when I think of you driving those turns at night, absolutely pie-eyed. I drive better drunk. It's because you've had more practice at it. How's the new fella? And this is especially the house for the carriage trade. <laughs> Speaking of the carriage trade, you seen any strangers around? In the ghost town? What would they be doing here? Well, just in case, if you do anyone, anyone at all, Get in touch with you right away, will you? If I see any strangers here, I'm gonna grab them, pull them in here, then roll them. Then I'll call you. <laughs> you have my blessing. You're a little premature. You usually get what you're after. I can't get you to stop drinking. Gotta lose some time. You've gotta stop some time. Tell you what I'll do, I'll cut for it. See, <laughs> it's impossible. Okay, but take it easy, huh? You too, sir. Hey, Scotty, how about another drink? You're very light on your feet. And on yours. <laughs> You're a lot younger than your jokes. Uh -huh. Where did you learn to cha cha? Oh, I sent away for a mail order course, but the left foot never arrived. Are you tired? Uncle. I'm glad you said it first. When you're not drag racing with policemen or rinsing out your brother, what do you do to keep busy? I'm a domestic. When summer comes, Dad pretends the housekeeper needs a long vacation. So I keep house for him and Bobby. Huh? What do you do in the winter? Now I know why you became a policeman. You just like to sit around asking questions. <laughs> it's my turn now. All right. What did you do before speeding tickets in the cha-cha? Uh, actually, I started out to be a lawyer. Mail order? University of Colorado. I passed my bar exams. I practiced for two years in Boulder City. But I, uh, it just didn't get me. Not enough excitement? Uh, not enough fresh air, I guess. Then what? Um, one of the cases I was handling, I met a police sergeant from Denver, homicide. 
And uh, his job seemed much more interesting than mine, so I became a policeman in homicide. A detective? Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting. Were you a good detective? Well, they seemed to think so. Uh, there was even talk of running me for district attorney. I'd have voted for you. <laughs> uh, another round, please. Well, you can't finish the chapter there. No personal life, no police women. Well, I did meet a girl, and we found a love, got married. Had three wonderful years, then she became ill. Everyone was very understanding. I, I couldn't keep my mind on what I was doing, and I messed up a terribly important case. The department was kind of glad to see me go. And when she died, I just couldn't stay in the same town. Well, you don't have to talk about it if you'd rather not. Oh, it's finished now, I think. I became somewhat of a drifter for a while. You know, nowhere to go, nothing to do. Until I ran into Sheriff Edwards here in Kingman. Uh, he knew about me and practically bullied me into becoming a deputy. Bless his overweight old heart. I'll go along with that. Well, what about the future? You could still run for district attorney. Well, the main thing at the moment is to do a good job right where I am. There's nothing to stop you. Hello, Deputy. Well, good evening, Mr. Houghton. Uh, Miss Kendon, do you know Mr. Houghton, our county attorney? Yes, we've met. I'm glad to see you're relaxing. Someone ought to tell him that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Yeah. Well, I think I better start getting real dull. Uh, check, please. I don't know about you, but Mr. Houghton just lost a vote. Mine. I'm sorry, Mad Dog. You wouldn't have it any other way. Well, Lieutenant, I guess that closes the books on Mad Dog Shuley. Should have listened to him, Mad Dog. Well, you couldn't have picked yourself a better time to have dropped in. I just made a discovery. That fellow who was murdered is sitting right here next to Mr. Kendon. But look. Oh, here, have yourself an apple while I phone the sheriff. Oh, uh, peel it. inquest. Yes, Miss Camden. According to your previous testimony before coming here, you were a lieutenant in the homicide division of the Denver Police Force. Yes, sir. You're experienced in homicide cases, therefore. Well, yes, sir. I've uh, had some experience, yes, sir. Perhaps you can explain why you seem to have no leads at all as to the murderer's identity. Uh, as I explained in my previous testimony. Is this your testimony about your discovering this body or the body earlier this week? Or the body last week. When you have as many murder cases as we have, you have to be a little more specific. Well, I'm sorry. I We're tried... talking about three unsolved murder cases. We have three bodies. It could be we have only one murder case. While the manner of these three deaths uh, shows no similarity, we believe there is a strong connection between them. Would you mind defining that connection? When I can define it, uh, That'll close the case. We know generally that John Doe and Eli Jones had met uh, shortly before John Doe was hanged. Both men died in the same place, a place that's visited by probably not more than a dozen people a year, the office of the inactive gold mine at Kendon. Mm -hmm. And the third man, Charles Piper. We know that Charles Piper leaped or fell or was pushed over the rim of the Grand Canyon at Granite Gorge. Yes, but we don't know why. When we know why, we'll probably know who. 
Well, that's a well-made phrase, Mr. Deputy. Let's go back to Denver. Thank you. The last case that you handle there involved the murder of a 16-year-old boy, one Harris Knight. Now, according to my investigation... Now, wait a minute, Sam. This has nothing to do with this inquest, and you know it. I know nothing of the kind. But I do know this. I'm the county attorney, responsible to the good citizens of Mojave County. And they're very upset, with good reason, over these three unsolved murders. Mr. Coroner, it's up to you to see that he sticks to the inquest. I'd like to answer him, Sheriff. Might as well have everything out. You may continue the questioning. Mr. Martin, according to my investigation, you had the police department in Denver holding the wrong man for trial. It wasn't until you were relieved of your job and another officer replaced you that the true murderer was found and convicted. Yes, sir. In other words, you were guilty of several mistakes and some carelessness in the matter of Harris Knight. Yes, sir. And then again, according to your testimony, the deceased Eli Jones intercepted you on the morning of the 16th of this month, and he begged you to come with him to interview a John Doe, a man known as R.E. Wallace, who was killed later the same day in the Kendon Mine office. Now, have I made any misstatements of fact up to this point? No, sir. According to your own report, you disregarded Eli Jones's request and went chasing after a girl. I wasn't chasing after any girl. I was taking care of a traffic violation. You gave her a ticket? Yes, I did. What was the ticket for? 45 miles an hour in a 25-mile zone. Wow, well, that doesn't sound so serious to me. Certainly not as serious as murder. Or even a request for help from Eli Jones? When Eli Jones asked for help, I didn't know of any murder. And I did see somebody break in the law. Now, you can call it a mistake only now, after the fact. You made a mistake in the case of Eli Jones and John Doe. You made a mistake in Denver in the matter of Harris Knight. Now, why should we have any reason to assume that there won't be further mistakes? I can't give you any guarantee. Nobody can. Mr. County Attorney. Our sole purpose here is to establish the identity of the deceased and to determine the cause of his death. Mr. Coroner, I'm just trying to do my job. And I assume that all of us are trying to do the same. It seems clear to me that those of us who haven't met with violent death so far might be reassured if there were fewer mistakes and more progress. Perhaps this entire community would all feel a little more secure if someone with a different record was handling this case. You seen the morning paper? You want my resignation? No, I don't want your resignation. But if this sort of thing keeps up, I'm going to have to accept it. Hey, Martin, you got quite a stack of unanswered phone calls out here. Dennis Kennan called. Miss Kennan called to report she's a missing person. All right. Dennis Kennan would like... I'd like to send you a food package. Where? I see at least you got the messages. He's been working like a dog, Miss Kennan. He is a dog. Not being a girl, you can't imagine how embarrassing it is if you keep chasing a man and he keeps hiding from you. I'm sorry, I... All right, deputy, put your hat back on. Take the silly look off. You're going to buy me a hamburger. All right, you're on. I'll just put these things away. I had a professor of medieval history had a jacket almost like this. Yeah, in New York? Of course, that's where Norman James is. Who's Norman James, your history professor? He is the man who makes these jackets with the funny little round lapels. Oh, Les, you are a country boy. Back in the effete East, you could be ostracized for asking a question like that. What are you talking about? Norman James is the most exclusive gentleman's tailor in New York, and this jazzy lapel and these crazy pockets are his trademark. Where could I find this Norman James? Would, would he be in the New York telephone book? You don't think he'd have an unlisted business number. He's not all that exclusive. What's that for? For being the best girl a deputy ever had. Well, hey, how about my hamburger? You stay right there. I'll get you a whole trunk full of hamburgers. Rush this out, will you? New York Police Department. 
Contact immediately. Norman James. Norman James made suit as described for only one customer. Randall E. Whittemore, Claiborne Towers, New York. Whittemore, Executive Vice President of Kendon Mining Corporation, currently on extended business trip. Pretty smart of you to recognize that jacket. We hicks out here probably never would have known about it. Uh, Janice recognized it. You think Mr. Kendon is connected with this somehow? Well, let's face it. He and Whittemore belong to the same company. Daughter recognized the jacket. What if you go out and have a little talk with Kendon? Yeah. Sick and thought it'd probably take half the time if I went out there. Well, if you want. No, no, you know your way around. Besides, why send an old man to do a boy's job? <laughs> Father. Father? Isn't this rather sudden? Line of duty. Oh. Oh, he and Bob are fighting again. They're in the den. Did you find out about the jacket? Yeah. Well, that's good. You're getting somewhere. Well, I don't know. This case better in some ways, worse than others. We'll not discuss it any further. Well, that's fine with me, because I'm sick of it. Dad, Mr. Martin is paying us an official visit. How do you? Oh, yeah. Well? Which one of you two's in trouble this time? Oh, they're not in any trouble, sir. I am. Oh? Oh, uh, Mr. Kendon, when was the last time you saw Mr. R. E. Whittemore? Randall Whittemore? Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. Uh, last May at the stockholders meeting in New York. You haven't seen him since? No. Why? Well, the man who was found dead at the Kendon mine office is Mr. R. E. Whittemore. What? Yes, sir. Oh, no. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to... Come down and identify him at the morgue. Of course. Well, this is shocking. You didn't even know he was coming out here? I had no idea. Father? Yes, he's here. Just a minute. Bob, it's for you. Who is it? I don't know. A man. Uh, Mr. Kendon, isn't it kind of... Hello? Strange. Oh. Uh, it's not getting in touch with you? Yes, it is strange. Why don't you sit down? I'll be there right away. I wonder... I wonder what he was here for. Well, my guess is he found that someone was taking ore out of the Kendon mine. I think you're on the wrong track. First place, you don't just walk into a mine and fall over a high-grade pocket. You have to know something about gold mining. You know, a lot of people around here know about that. Yes, but even after you discover the ore, you still have to blast it out. Now, that's hard to do, quietly. You have to blast? I suppose under some circumstances you could get it out with jackhammer and pick. But you still have to get it out and sell it somewhere. Taking a few hundred pounds of gold ore at a time, say, six or seven thousand dollars worth, you could load it onto a truck or even a small plane. Yes, I suppose so. Excuse me, I think I'll make some coffee. Uh, none for me, thanks. Mr. Kendon, have, have you told me everything you know about this case? What do you mean? I don't have to steal for my own mind. I'm sorry I have to ask you these questions. she going? I have no idea. You have any idea where Bob went? Well, if he's not in a bar, where he probably is, he might be out at the crop duster strip where we keep the old company plane. I'll be back and see you. That'll be a pleasure I can forego. me at home. 
Well, merciful heavens. Look who got out of the wrong side of the bed this morning. You know who was there when you called? The deputy sheriff. No. Let's finish loading the plane. I dug it all myself. Then we're off to Rio. Rio? Are you crazy? Why the sudden change in our plans? We sell the stuff in Mexico, and then we head south. Kid, I know places in Rio that makes Las Vegas look like a Sunday afternoon in Philadelphia. You know, you remind me of Charlie Piper. I had him figured for a lazy lover from the start, too. I'm glad I got rid of him. I got news for you. If I could fly this crate, I wouldn't need you either. You mean you killed Charlie Piper? Oh, I should have, but I didn't. What a character. Just like you, never did anything right. I give him a job. Busting up some rocks. He lets an old geezer with a trick suit catch him at it. So I said to him, all right, Charlie, let him follow you up to the canyon, then you shove him over the edge. He gets into a fight and he can't even lick an old man. Who's gonna take care of him? Good old Scotty. That's cold-blooded murder. Oh, come off it, kid. This might have been a cute caper of yours to get back at your old man for being twice the man you are. Me, I went along for the loot. That's worth the lives of two men? Two. <laughs> I forgot to tell you about Eli. You murdered Eli! What do you want from me? He sees a picture of the old snooper up in an office wall in Kendon. If I don't get rid of him and the picture, everybody in the whole county would know who the guy was. They already know. No, who? Head man of the whole mining combine, that's all. Well, now, don't that take the cake? Before the day's over, they're going to know who we are. Here we are all wrapped up, snug as a bug in a rug, and ready to roll. Now you go to work, daddy -o. We put on the lab strap, turn on the no-smoking sign, and away we go. No. Oh, kid, come on, don't be that way. If I said anything about your old man you didn't like, I'll apologize all along the way. Come on. I'm not going. Oh, kid, don't be a drag. You know I can't fly this thing. Kid, I'm gonna have to knock you off the company payroll. Knock him off, but you're gonna be my ticket out of here. Now, come on, your car, let's drive. You know, nobody's gonna dare to throw a rock at me for fear of hitting you. How's that for a hot flash? Back it up! I did you not back it up! Three, calling KOA 776. Come in, car three. Hey, George, let me talk to the sheriff. Left. Yeah. Scotty O'Brien's our man. He's killed Bob Kendon, taken off in Janice's car with her as hostage. Where are you? Crop dust strip with a flat tire and a broken radiator. Now, he's heading north. 
Better notify Bus to warm up the planes. We're going to need them. Okay, I'll pick you up. George, get the emergency van. Attention, all units. broadcast for a special news bulletin. Mojave County's multiple murder case came to a violent climax today with a fatal shooting of Robert Kendon and the kidnapping of his sister Janice by a Mojave County innkeeper, Scotty O'Brien. O'Brien and his captive are apparently headed for Pierce Ferry on Lake Mead, where O'Brien possibly hopes to pick up a boat and lose himself in the vast reaches of the lake and its 550 miles of shoreline. And now we return to Don Hale's musical favorite. Stop the car! Stop it! Now back it up, back it up! Right, that's it, now hold it. To the right, to the right, let's go!
knocked off, baby. Come on. Billy Boy! Where are you, Billy Boy? Scotty, you lost your marbles? Look, Billy Boy, I got a boat waiting for me on the other side, and I need a ride, and you're gonna give me one. Now, this thing is loaded. How do you like those apples? Let's move. Dozy says he killed Vault. Move, move! Come on. See the Thunderbird outside the tram shaft. Any sign of them? No, they must be inside. We're landing now. We'll be right there. Get going. Billy Boy, let's go. If you don't pull that switch, I'm going to have to pull this trigger. That's going to make hard feelings all the way around. Did you get the message of the sheath? Ever. 
Hey, Ward. Take us back. And be careful. <laughs> 